Alright, so what's going on guys? I want to start a new series where I talk about the differences between the Berserk 1997 anime and the manga. Now we're going to go episode by episode and just talk about the key differences, some of the moments that they skipped in the manga, but without further ado, let's get started. Now the anime starts with Goto fixing Guts' as Dragon Slayer. Now of course, this scene takes place during the Black Swordsman arc, which is the first arc of the series. However, as the readers, we don't officially meet Goto until chapter 48 in the manga, and this is actually just a flashback when Guts is talking to Casca. Now after Guts gets his sword fixed, he goes to the town of Koka, searching for the Snake Baron Apostle. Now the anime skips the iconic opening scene in which Guts screws and kills the female Apostle. And of course, if you haven't seen Conan the Barbarian, the one with Arnold Schwarzenegger, you would sort of know that this Berserk scene is sort of a play on that moment in which Conan has sex with the witch-like creature and then tosses her ass in the fire, whereas Guts blows up the Apostle with his cannon, which starts a fire as well. We then get to the part where a group of coca thugs is now terrorizing a teenage girl inside of a bar, and the teenage girl is Colette. Now Colette doesn't show up until episode 0B, i.e. the brand, in the manga, where she gets possessed by the demons and beheads her own father. Now her father does show up in this episode and he gets beaten up by the coca thugs, but in the manga, they aren't in the bar whatsoever. This is Puck getting beaten up, and in fact, he's got a noose around his neck, and Puck doesn't even show up in this episode. So that's a huge difference from the manga because Puck's nowhere to be seen. Now I can understand why they didn't want to show Puck, and I actually appreciate the anime more because of it. Because the 1997 anime is primarily telling the Golden Age story, and the Golden Age story doesn't have a lot of the mythological creatures and apostles in it. Um, we see Zod, we see Wyald, um, we see Puck towards the eclipse, but it's mostly a story about, you know, realistic fights about warring states in a European-esque um, landscape. So I, I think it wanted to tell more of that story and make it realistic, and I feel like the ending episode, episode 25 with the eclipse, comes as more of a shock because of it. And I actually watched the 1997 anime before watching the manga, and I think I appreciated it more because of that fact. Now of course, Mira's vision is just absolute perfection, I'm not taking anything away from that, but you know, to tell a story verbatim is not really taking any chances. Um, and I feel like sometimes taking chances, showing things from a different perspective, showing things in a different light is kind of interesting sometimes. They also don't show the Skull Knight in the anime whatsoever as well. So, uh, you know, it wasn't supposed to be an anime that told the entire Berserk canon. It was just supposed to be primarily about the Golden Age arc and just showing a unique perspective about it. And I fell in love with the anime and I, I still love it till this day. So some of you may disagree. Some of you may say, well, taking out the mythological elements sort of castrates Mira's vision and it's not really berserk at the end of the day. I mean, it's, it's all based on taste and personal preference, but you know, I appreciate it for what it is. And I think at the end of the day, it still does the berserk manga justice. Even so, with the 25 episodes, they still had to truncate a lot of the events, and I feel like if you're going to get into those mythological elements, then you sort of have to tell the Black Swordsman story in its entirety, and they just didn't have time for it all. I mean, it would have been like 75 episodes if you did the entire Black Swordsman arc and the entire Golden Age arc. So I, I appreciate it for what it is, and I still love it to this day. Just don't read the manga. Now in the manga, after Guts takes care of the thugs, he's immediately taken into custody by the town guards. He is henceforth tortured, sees a vision of the demon child, and is eventually saved by Puck. Guts also mentions the brand on his neck. Now in the anime, Guts heads to the forest where he's possessed by evil spirits and sees a vision about the god hand. We see the brand bleed, but we have no information about what it is or why he has it. Now I can understand why they got rid of the scene with the demon child. The thing is, is they ended the anime at a specific point in the eclipse, and I know a lot of people are like, well that's the worst cliffhanger of all time because then it's like, well you're forced to read the manga at that point. But isn't that a good thing at the end of the day? I mean, 
the manga is perfection. I mean, shouldn't it be sort of a impetus to get you into the manga? Like, if they told the entire story as it was, a lot of people wouldn't have got into the manga. They might have just been like, well, I know the story already. What's the point of reading the manga? And then you would have missed all those critical details that Mira put in there, all the symbolism, all the beautiful artwork. So I love the way that it told the story. And that was one of the prime reasons that I wanted to read the manga in the first place was, shit, what's going to happen to Guts after this? Now the anime does a great job of capturing the terror of the Snake Baron, yet it pales in comparison to the manga, since we see him drinking the blood from the dead body of a child. But it's easy to see why this scene didn't make it to air. It's also easy to see why this scene didn't make it to air as well. Now in both the manga and the anime, Guts blasts the Snake Baron with his cannon, slices him in half, and abuses him with his repeating crossbow. However, in the manga, he questions the Apostle about the five members of the God Hand, which is pivotal because this serves as the impetus for the following adventure with the Count. Which, as we all know, doesn't occur in the 1997 anime, since it completely skips the rest of the Black Swordsman arc and jumps into the Golden Age arc. And it doesn't even go to the beginning of the Golden Age arc, but what is known as Chapter 4 of the Golden Age arc. So as a reference, Episode 1 begins with the Black Swordsman, which is Chapter 1 in Volume 1. It skips the two other chapters in Volume 1, and completely skips Volumes 2 and 3. It thusly picks up in the second chapter of Volume 4, so quite a bit of the story is left untold. Of course, with this being a 25 episode series, we can't expect all the details to be filled in, especially if you want to do the Golden Age arc justice, which, that was the primary aim of the show anyway, and they were going for more of a realistic angle. But with that guys, that's all I got for episode 1. Next time, we'll explore the differences between episode 2 and the manga. Catch you on the flip side.